welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going right back into the archives of time today to check out a puzzle by John Bolton, um, which appeared on GM Puzzles uh, in 2019, no less. It's called Top Heavy 21 Dice. And it's a Philomeno puzzle, just a, a plain old Philomeno puzzle. If you've never seen Philomeno, do not worry. I will explain how they work. Um, why, you might say, are we doing this puzzle? Well, that is a very good question. The reason is that none other than Glipperal uh, wrote us an email a couple of days ago saying that uh, Glipperal has just discovered this puzzle and he thinks it's absolutely amazing. Um, Glipperal is a person of some huge intellect, let me tell you. So when Glipperal says things about puzzles, we tend to listen. Um, and I got one of the testers to have a look at this and they echoed everything that Glipperal has said. Apparently this is just a work of staggering genius, which is odd because um, Philomenos, Philomenos, they, they can be very nice to solve, but to describe this uh, so effusively is, is, is quite surprising. Um, and yeah, this is what we're going to be having a go at. Now, um, as I say, it appears on uh, gmpuzzles.com. That is a web website I certainly recommend to all of you. Uh, it's run by a couple of friends of mine, Tom Snyder and uh, Sir, Sir Kai Irekli, uh, from Well, Tom's from America, Sir Kan's from Turkey. Um, both brilliant, brilliant puzzlers. Um, and um, of course, sort of denizens of the puzzle community for years and years. Uh, Thomas has been um, world world puzzle champion once and world Sudoku champion three times at least, um, and I've no doubt he will have something to say in the upcoming world Sudoku championship coming up later this month. Um, anyway, check out gmpuzzles.com; it's wonderful. Um, now, what else do I need to tell you about today? I've got a few birthdays to today, but I'm going to start off with. Um, with the news which is all around we're over on patreon we've got a brand new sudoku hunt from the skunk works loads of you are loving that including lots of lots of newcomers uh, who've not managed to finish one of our sudoku hunts before so do have a look at that you will be able to do it and i know you're going to find it fun um our book is very we're very nearly ordering the, pr the print run so if you do want to get your your hands on a copy of cracking the cryptics greatest hits volume two um, before Christmas, then do do check that out. I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen. And then Line Sudoku, which is our brand new app. That's been in the, in the works for ages. Um, that's, uh, uh, that's now available on all platforms. So it's out on Android, it's out on Apple, and it's out on Steam. And I, I will tell you, I spent a very enjoyable uh, afternoon slash evening yesterday working on poetry. So, so one of the things with the kickstart of the book was that... Um, uh, the guys who supported the Kickstarter got to recommend poetry for me to read. Um, so I, I, I started to put that video together yesterday and uh, oh, some of the recommendations are spectacularly good. Um, so I had a very enjoyable time uh, reading some old favourites of mine and I've got more to come later on today. Um, after a lunch actually, I'm going out to lunch in London. So if any of you see me wandering around, I normally sort of wander around looking slightly lost. Um, then, yeah, point me in the right direction. Maybe say hello. Um, now, birthdays. Let's say happy birthday to Lucas. And this is from your girlfriend, Letitia, over there in Brazil. Um, apparently, Lucas watches every day and he makes Letitia watch him solve some of the puzzles. Well, Letitia, you lucky girl. That's all I can say. And Lucas, happy birthday. I hope you have a brilliant one with, of course, chocolate cake. Um, Alyssa, you've turned 36 today. And I know this because um, Frederick wrote to us. Uh, Frederick's in Sweden. He says he's your best cousin in Sweden. Um, and Alyssa, I know you're in another country. I, I don't know which country that is, but he's grateful for all the support you've given him. Um, and I'm not even sure, Alyssa, whether you watch the channel, but I'm guessing Frederick will, will send you the video, if not, and happy birthday. Um, Ellie, you've turned 21 today. That's a very important milestone in life. Uh, over there in Iowa, uh, you've been watching for a couple of years and you you enjoy the fact that we enjoy what we do. Well, we do, I have to tell you that. Um, hopefully it comes across in the videos, but Mark and I are both sort of fiends of the puzzle world for forever, frankly. Um, so we love doing puzzles and now we get to solve puzzles, you know, as a job. And 
do not underestimate how lucky we we are um, to do that um, we know how lucky we are I spent I've spent all but my entire working life um, doing things I really didn't love and I don't recommend it um, so if you can find something you enjoy uh, to make a living out of trust me your quality of life will improve immeasurably um, next Mika you've turned 23 over there in Germany and I know this because Henrik wrote to us and told us uh, apparently you go to sleep watching Cracking the Cryptic or soccer videos hmm okay um, and tonight you're having dinner in a Mexican restaurant well that does sound nice uh, and you might celebrate by watching a CTC video so Mika I hope that's right and I hope you have a great day today uh, oh I should say ha happy birthday as well to my godson William I don't know if William watches religiously but if you're watching this Will happy birthday um, and then finally a very special birthday long way to Tipperary who who well typical of long way to Tipperary um, describes our, our community as basically the best community in all of all of YouTube but actually Long Way to Tipperary is the most wonderful wonderful contributor um, to this channel always if you look at the videos under or look at the comments under every video Long Way to Tipperary is there commenting positively um, just an absolutely lovely presence so long way to Tipperary both Mark and I wish you many many happy returns and thank you for being such um, I don't know such an amazing person let us leave it like that now that all said and done let's have a look at top heavy 21 dice by John Bolton and I will read you the rules which will not take long <laughs> divide the grid into regions of orthogonally connected cells such that no two regions of the same size share an edge. So let's have a think about this. Let's say that that five region did that. Boom. Now this region, which has to be a size five region, can't share an edge with this five region. So we couldn't do something like that. Even if it was a different shape, it wouldn't matter. So let's make it look like that. These two five regions share an edge. And that's too naughty for words. You mustn't, you mustn't let, let that happen or you won't have solved the phenomenon correctly. Um, some of you may wonder, what does orthogonally connected cells, what does that mean? Orthogonally connected cells are cells that share an edge, not cells that join at a point. Those two cells are not orthogonally connected. To make these cells part of an orthogonally connected region, or we'd have to add something like that. Now these cells are part of a region of orthogonally connected cells because you can trace from one cell to the next always crossing a long edge so it's a very simple idea but orthogonally is a word with many syllables that i have to admit before i started puzzling i certainly wouldn't have known what it meant even though i, I solve a lot of crosswords um yeah and the only other rule is to enter a number into each cell equal to the size of its region i.e the number of cells in its region so if that was the region you'd enter five in all of those and that would make it even clearer you couldn't make this five touch this five um, and that's all the rules literally that's all the rules Philomeno is a very simple to understand puzzle do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now I get to play let's get cracking um, now are we going to use colors or the line tool today because what hmm, I don't know because what we could do if I, make sure by the way if you want to start drawing lines in the grid make sure you, you you click the cog icon and turn the pen tool on that will allow you to do things like this um, oh in fact look, there's a one I'm going to start there that's an easy win a, a, one, a one in a cell means that's a size one region um, yeah so look we can we can put a six here we can put a five here we can put a six here because the this six these these corner cells have to be at least equal to that size um now what next we could uh, i don't know actually um we could Sorry, Ma I can hear Maverick. Maverick's just taken off. We got into a whole series of this. This happened for weeks on end a few months ago, where literally I would start the video and Maverick would take off and fly past my window. Um, but that hasn't happened for a while until the last couple of days. Why can't I see how to do this? This five can't 
I can see it can't connect to those fives because it, it's not quite long enough, is it? It would it would have to be six to connect to these fives. So it's penned in to the top corner, the top corner somehow. I just can't quite see. Uh, it can't. Well, it can't take both of. Yeah, it can't take both of those squares, or the four couldn't get out. Yeah. Okay. So the this five does have to take that cell, doesn't it? Let's prove that to ourselves. Imagine it didn't take that cell, so we'll make that green. And let's try and work out how we could make this five work if it doesn't take this cell. You can see there's just not enough room. It would have to take these two cells and it would pen the four in. So that's definitely part of the five. So that four has to take, that. those two have to be in the same region now because the four must take that cell, otherwise it can it can only get a count of three. So this is what we have to do with Philomena. You sort of have to work out how regions must grow. And this one, yeah, so this cell now, if it took this square, the puzzle would be broken because we know that this five is part of the green five in the top and we know it could never reach this so if this one was to go up, it would inevitably connect to the green and make a size six region or touch the green, which we can't have. We can't have two regions of the same size touching one another. So this cell, we can hypothecate off for the bottom of the grid, or at least it can't come to that square. And the same is true, obviously, this five now can't come here. So this six might have to come through this gap. Um, hmm. Hmm. I can't see what to do up here. <laughs> this is going to. I, I I don't think I'm that bad at Philomeno anymore. I've done enough Philomeno to be. Um, no, I may. I wouldn't describe myself as handy at Philomeno, but I would describe myself as you know experienced. Uh, Let's think we could. It is also interesting, actually, now I look at this, that none of these. Yeah, no, OK, right. So I had an idea here. Now, if you look at that six. Well, in fact, it's look at that pattern of sixes. That's a bit sus, isn't it? And in fact, if I highlight, maybe I could just double, oh, I can, I can just double click on all the sixes. Now I am going to allege, these are all a suspicious distance apart, I think, because I don't think any of these sixes can connect to each other. By, by which I mean, you know, can those two sixes be part of the same region and that's seven cells to connect them can these two sixes no because that's seven cells to connect them and this these sixes are so regularly appearing in the grid that that feels suspicious especially as i already noticed that the fives seem to be a part let me double click the fives so yeah, OK, so actually what we're probably dealing with here is a puzzle where, how big is the puzzle? 10 by 10, so we've got 100 cells to fill. And we have got, we've got, let's ignore the sixes that we've expanded. We've got eight given sixes which all have to be part of different regions. So those those eight given sixes are going to account for 48 cells out of our 100 total. But the fives are also going to count for some, aren't they? Let's how many fives have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight fives, I think I got there. Now, this is where we should be. We should slow down, though, because if you get the count wrong when you're doing this sort of thing, you can reach very bogus conclusions. I think I have got eight fives. So eight fives, which are also going to have to count, you know, each five is in a different region. So that's 40s worth of cells. So that's 88 worth of cells for the sixes 
and the fives. So we've only got we've only got 12 cells for any other numbers in this puzzle. And we've got a one, so we've got 11 cells, two twos. They can't join together, so that's that's four, so seven cell. <laughs> okay, all right, so this is the point of the puzzle, <laughs> because there's a three there and a four there as well, and they can't be part of the same region. So actually, this is a lovely idea. This is a lovely idea. I'm not so sure I haven't seen something like this before, but the the the, the conceit behind the puzzle is that every given number is isolated from all the other given numbers and the sum of all the numbers in this grid is a hundred um so there are no so it's what so what we're being told i suppose is many things we're being told there can't be a hidden seven region here because we've accounted for all 100 cells so there can't be any other region. You know, there couldn't be a three region here because that would take the total count of cells in the puzzle to at least 103. What else are we being told then? We're being told that every cell in this puzzle has to reach a given number. Which actually doesn't look that it doesn't look that difficult on the face of it i wondered whether there was going to be some cell somewhere which was hard or maybe a cell that's hard to reach no okay i was wondering about that one um but that's that can be reached by five in fact it can be reached by two fives uh that one could be reached by five that one could be reached. uh no sorry i thought there might be cells in the puzzle that couldn't be reached by any number other than maybe a five or a six and therefore at least we could label them um hang on let me, right let me just mull this for a second so we've We've got a we've got a complete count. I need to give that a colour. That's really essential. Um, maybe I should highlight all of the all of the fives in green, <laughs> all of the sixes. What what colour should we make the sixes? Purple. That's lovely, isn't it? And then we make the twos yellow, and the three can be red. There we go. So. Uh, sorry, I haven't quite. I still haven't quite got to the bottom of what this means. It's this clearly important. Can that be a six? Is that going to? No, it's not going to pen that one in. Um, it could be. Ah, there you go. This is it. Right, that square. Do you remember we looked at this square, and I said that six is probably coming through there. Well, now actually we know it does, because if this isn't, it has this cell has to connect to a given number in the grid, and the four can't reach it, and it can't be a five, and the only other thing that can be is a six. So that's a six. That uh, still doesn't put very much pressure on the five above it. Right. So does that? No, <laughs> I thought that was going to do something. Sorry. I still, I'm still broken here, aren't I? I don't quite get it still. Ah, what about that cell? That cell can't be reached by a five, I don't think. Yeah, okay, so that's got to be a six because nothing else can get down here. Uh, uh, that's really right this is very clever this is very clever setting okay so now a question we could ask is which given six does this six attach to and i think it might have to be this one because if it isn't this one so let's say this six joined to that one or that one. Let's just connect it to this one here. 
how does this get a, get to a count of six? Well, we can cram in five of the cells there. But to take a sixth cell, the, pro the problem, yeah, the problem that you run into is that every cell orthogonally connected with, with any six region you draw, let's say we drew in that six region. What do you put into all of these cells that connect with it? Because you can't put six anymore. So you now have to be able to reach cells like this with, a, with another number that's not six. And there's just no way. There's just no way. So now that wasn't an exhaustive proof. But if we, if we say we take those, we clearly can't take this. So we're either taking that one or that one because we can't, we can't connect it to that one. So that one as well, that isolate, simply isolates that cell and then nothing could connect to it. That's really, that's such a lovely idea. So that has to connect to that. And because we know, actually it's not possible anyway, but because we know that neither of uh, these cells can belong to their own region, i.e. a region that's not connected to a given, those two must both be sixes as well. And, and, and that, you know, I don't actually think we could have done that. That would have been a seven cell region, but that is, it's forced anyway by the logic. So this square, <laughs> so that square, what's that? It can't be six, because that would make the six part of a seven region, but it has to be part of a given. It can only be part of that. So that's five. This is green. Ah, this is, this is stunning. This is an absolutely stunning idea. Um, which I shouldn't be surprised about at all. I am I'm a bit surprised about how it's how it's working. Well, right, okay. So now <laughs> I think the puzzle's just going to fill in because um, look at this this tower of fiveage that we've built. Every single orthogonal cell connected to this five can't be five, and yet has to reach a given. Well. No, the two, uh, no, the two can't reach it. The three, the four can't reach it. So we can just write six into all of those squares and perplify them. Boom. And that means, right, now look at this. That's a, We've now made a tower of six, which can't connect here. That has to connect to a given. It can only be the yellow to, oh, this is sick. This is absolutely brilliant. Um... Uh, oh, look, and in doing that, I I didn't realize I'd done it, but I've completed this six down at the bottom. That is now, that's now got six in it. So, okay, so let's run that argument in reverse now. Everything connected to this six can't be a six. That one might be ambiguous, but these two can't connect to the two, three, or the four. So they've got to be fives. They've got to be green. Now you've got to connect these fives to a given five, which must be this one. So it has to come through there. Otherwise, this could have been a two, this square here. Um, right, I don't quite see. We probably, there probably is a way to tell which one of the, how this five reaches a quorum. And I can't immediately see, does that have to be six? We've got sort of, we've got nearly got, now you can't connect all of these up. That would be a seven region. But you could connect some some portion of them up. Um, this six can only grow by one more. And once it's grown, everything orthogonally connected to it is going to have to be a five. Which makes me think that's impossible. So what I'm thinking is if that's a six, then all of these are fives. And especially if all of those are fives, what five do we connect them to? These all have to be part of the same region. And there's no five within, you know, that's touching touching this. So that doesn't work at all. So that has to be a five, um, which has to connect to this five, doesn't it? Because nothing else, it can't get to that one. So that's got to be a five. So this six here is now is now got to be very careful about not touching this six. I mean, it could probably be that shape. 
maybe. Oh, no, actually, it definitely can't be. That's interesting. In fact, I'm, I think I've now broken the puzzle, which is very stupid of me. I don't know what I did wrong. But, but the thing I can see that's a problem with this is that once this six grows, it's then going to grow there, and this five's getting trapped in. And I don't think, I mean, if... So that I think we're saying that has to be part of this six, but I don't think there's going to be enough room still. Hang on, how am I going? No, this can't. I've done something wrong here. I don't think this can possibly work. Let me just think about this. That certainly can't be a six. Uh, because if that's a six, again, I have this problem with fives. These, five, th these fives would then be a unit of their own. Yet they need to connect to a given five or our count for the whole grid is going to be too high. So that's got to be a five, which is purple. So this has got to be a five, which is purple. Why did I say purple when I was filling in green? This is what this puzzle's done to me. It's because I think I've broken it. And I think this is just all going to have to be unwound, I'm afraid. Um, I can't see how this one works either. Let's do that. I mean, I think we're, we're going to run out of everything. Everything's not going to work. You're going to get two fives here and you can't connect them because this top five, if it connects up, that's going to be a six region of, with fives in it. And it can't connect to this. So that's got to be five. That's got to be green. Um, so one of these has to be a six. And then it's got to allow this six to exist. If that's six, let's just try that. If that's six, then these two are both five. And that this five's got nowhere, nowhere it can live, nowhere it can join to. So that doesn't work. Ah, bobbins. That's that's. This is the only thing that's going to work. Those two now have to be fives. And good grief, that does work. Why couldn't I see that? That's weird. That's so strange that 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 exact position is the only one that allows these fives to go into the grid. This is great though. Look, I've done this five region, so all of those have to be six. That means this is six because we need to make this of size six. And look, that can poke out there. And we've still got a solution that is working. That's just, I mean, this is, this is so absolutely magnificent these two squares both have to be six because the three can't get to them <laughs> so that they're six um right here's a good question if that was a six let's just put it in to show you if that was a six this four region now can't join to this two region so how would this two region grow to be of size six it couldn't it's it's been stunted by the existence of this and that's jolly unfair so this square has to not be a six and therefore it's got to be a three and that allows us to redify a few cells um which allows us to do that now this okay and then we can see how this must work because this is a seven cell region well therefore we're going to have to have another another philomeno unit come in here somehow and it the only one that's available is that one so that's got to come in and poke in these two now become six let's fill this in this five has to grow at least to there well it's got to grow more than that but it's going to take one of these two squares right so Whichever one of these, this five, this five takes, could this five grow in this direction? No, because then it will orthogonally connect with this region and that's too naughty for words. So we can, we can label this there. Uh, mm, don't quite know how to do that. So this, this is either coming here or here. This cell is now a six then, isn't it? Because no other number can get to it. That four certainly can't get there. So that's a six, that gets its own color. 
Now, does this six join to that one or to that one? I'm going to say, I'm not sure actually, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I, I really don't know. I was going to say, doesn't that have to be a six? Well, I don't even think that's necessary. I think that actually this might have to be a six because could it be a five is the question. The only five it could belong to is this one. So it would, it would be that um, configuration. And now, now when I just did this, I thought this was a problem. Yes, it is a problem because the only way this can grow now is there. And then this six has only two cells of six that it can it can occupy. So actually this is six. It still might not have to join with this. It really does depend on which way this goes. Oh gosh, I mean if it goes there. This has got to come up here. That's going to force the four. I don't know actually. I'm still I'm still unsure about the world here. If that goes there, then it couldn't join to this. So hang on. Right. So this one always pokes through here. Let's let's test that. Let me just think about that. So if we say this six can't ever take this square. How does it ever reach a count of six? Well, it can't take five because its next cell will join it to a domino. So it would have to do that, but then its next cell joins it to a domino and it becomes a seven. So that, that is definitely a six. Um, what about that cell? So one, two, three. No, this, cause this, this, this can just come out now, can't it? It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to worry its little head anymore. Oh, that five must have to come out now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the simplest deduction, isn't it? This five can't get five by going upwards, so it's got to come down a little bit at least. And <laughs> so now... I still don't know, I don't think. Is this obvious? I, th I have a feeling this is much more obvious than I've actually allowed it to be at this point. How long have I had? 33 minutes. Oh, well, that's, that's not... It's not that surprising. I think it, it, it's got some teeth. You've got, to, you've got to appreciate it's a full count phenomeno. And that took me a few minutes to do. Um, so now what do we do? This one feels like there's a tension between these two, doesn't it? And this, this six region, although I'm not still not sure that this necessarily joins up to that. How do we? If that, that can't be five. Uh, I'm not actually sure that's true. Let me just have a think about that. If that's five, this then, it's certainly true to say that this can't take that square because it's going to pen in five cells for the six. So the, the green's going to be a U pentomino. And then and then this joins to that so that doesn't work so that one is definitely six now does that now have to be six ah ah okay no simpler simpler that's a size four six region it certainly can't join to a size three six region so that's a five on the basis it can't be any other number whoops um, 
<laughs> now that one could join either way. It's going to join with... I don't know how to see that. I mean, if that goes down... See, it's difficult, this. Because if this comes down and takes this square, I still think there's two ways that this one could join together. It could take this one or this one. And then this one could take that one or that one. What about if, that, if that comes across there, then this would have to be a six. That would do a lot of damage, I think. Because then these two would both have to be green. Oh, hang on, that doesn't work, does it? Oh no, because that this six could come out here. Oh, bobbins. I thought, I thought this six was going to get trapped in, but of course if I make that a six it can come out. Although that does look like it's getting very cluttered. So I feel this is under more pressure. Yeah, the other place actually that that's under, but let's just have a look at that. If we do that, yeah, how does this grow? This is something I've neglected. There might be a way that we can do more at the bottom of the grid here. We've got 10 white cells in that region. How would they get filled? No, okay, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Right, the way to see this is to, uh, let me, can I just color these in in a color I've not used yet? Let's color those squares in gray. Okay, there are 10 cells here that we know have to connect to black numbers in the grid. So how are we going to do that? Well, we could one of them could be a two. So that's one of them dealt with. One of them could be a five. That's another dealt with. Three of them could join to that six region. So that's five of them dealt with. I've still got five more to deal with. I could attach one to that green. But this six... To get into the grey area, it's going to have used three of its cells, so it could only contribute three, and that's not enough. So that grey, so that grey, well, so we can't create this line up between the fives. So these two are not, well, th th there is no direct connection between these fives. So this five has to connect to this one. And the only way of doing that is if it takes that square, because it can't do a ring around the rosy or it will be six big. So that is a region. So this, uh, no, that's fine. It's fine. Okay, but now this six has to get out further, doesn't it? Because this four is going to connect to this somehow. Don't know how. So this six can't connect to this six. So the maximum it can get there is, so that's got to be a six. Um, oh, well, no, because we don't know how this is going to grow still. Oh, Bobbin's, Bobbin's face, how do we do this? Um, this is really, it's got, it's got some teeth, this one. It really does. One, two, three. This, this one we know is not part of this one. Yeah, so this six can't grow to here, can it? Now that's, I think, true. Let's just check whether I'm right about that. So let's extend this six and ask how we, re we get this one to reach a count of six now. I don't think it's got enough space. It can take two more, but it can't take that one. It can't take those two. So that doesn't work. So this square is not, well, it's definitely not a six. And it can't be a four, so it must be a five. 
Oh, goodness only knows what that means. Well, that's quite good for that square, actually, because now that square does have to be a 6, because we can't join that 5 to that 5. OK, so now we get this little configuration. This 5 can't join to that shape, otherwise it's too big. So that's hived off. That gets us another five here. That's great. That's great, actually, because now this five can't join there. And that means this has to be six again, doesn't it? Which is... So that six can't go any further. This six can't go up. So, oh, look, 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 look. What's that square? <laughs> That's got to be five. It's the only thing it can be. And in being five, it has to get out. And it connects and makes a... Um, one of these funny pentominoes, the F pentomino, rotated F pentomino there. So that's got to exist. Now everything that connects to this F has to be not 5. And none of these can be any other number but 6. So they're all 6. <laughs> and surely we've... Right, this 6 hasn't got enough room, so it's got to grow again there. Now it can't join to this. So what's that number? That's got to be the two, because it can't be a five. There's no, no five it could connect to. So that's the two, that's a yellow uh, digit. We can hive these off. Oh, look, it's, it's gonna fall now. This, this six has just got enough room. That five can grow. That six is gonna get completed by this. Look, that's a six, that's a five. These are sixes. Let's color them in. So there, that's right. That's green, that's thingy. That must be five can't be anything else still haven't got, we've still got to work out how this top finishes at the top but i think we're on the home straight now famous last words yeah look that square that can't be five now so it can oh no it could be six or four could it oh no come on you're joking uh uh, yeah, okay, one way to think, think about this is the 4. If the 4 occupied that 2 by 2, then the 5 would have... Well, the 5 can't... No, this is, no, that's my far the most complicated way of doing it. The way to think about it is, that, is to draw that line in the 5, and then you realise that the 5 has only one space to go into, uh, if you're not a total numpty, which apparently my, my brain wants me to be today. So those are all done. There we go. That six now has to join up there to get six cells in it. Let's color that in. The five hasn't completed. It it has now. Ah, oh, this is so good. Look, 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 look. That's a six. And that's a five. And we can draw that in. And that's... I think that's how to do it. Now, I don't know whether the this will work. Oh, it did work. It did work. So whoever's put this in the software has actually made it work somehow. I don't know if it if it's looked at the lines I've drawn or whether it's looked at the at the numbers I've put in, but it did work. That is an absolutely brilliant puzzle. Absolutely brilliant puzzle. It's got um, this sort of overarching theme of a full count. But the way that it's done so that you can just keep you can keep pinpointing cells that you can only just attach to certain other cells and the way that the logic flows from that is quite brilliant it's a it's an absolute gem glipperal you well as i think you already knew glipperal you were right that is spectacularly clever um so we have gone back in history, but with very good reason. That's just magnificent. I look forward to the comments on this one with great interest. Let's give John an awful lot of love and Glipperal some props as well. What? <laughs> That's just mind-blowingly clever. <laughs> we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.